Now, you pages all know that I don't ordinarily go through this inspection routine, but this is the first time in over a year that Mr. Patterson, the president of the network, is coming to the coast. And he's a stickler for neatness. Better comb that hair, Bell. Watch the lint, Porter. Mr. Patterson doesn't like crooked ties. Bear that in mind, Dewey. There's a little dust on those shoes, Devlin. Yes, sir. Mulligan, I'm forced to admit that you've risen to the occasion. Thank you, sir. Now, we must make sure that everything goes like clockwork. When Mr. Patterson comes to the artist's entrance, they'll ring you, Pat. Then you buzz me on the intercom. I'll come out of my office to greet Mr. Patterson. Yes, sir. All right, men, take your post. Oh, Mulligan. Yes, sir. Look, we'll run through this once just to make sure the timing is right. Yes, sir. I want you to play the part of Mr. Patterson. Go out in the corridor, wait for about uh, 20 seconds, then come back in as the president of the network. 20 seconds, yes, sir. Right. Good morning, Mr. Patterson. Good morning, young lady. And what is your name, pray tell? Patricia Harding, sir. Mm, pretty name for a pretty girl. Thank you, sir. Mm. Good morning, Paige. Good morning, Mr. Patterson, sir. Mm. A little lint on your shoulders there, Paige. There's the crease in your trousers, not too creasy either. Mr. Brown. Just testing, sir. Mickey, uh, I mean, Mr. Patterson is on his way in. All right. Now, look alive in there. Yes, sir. I think those shoes could be a little shine, too, if I'm not... <laughs> God, God. Pat, you've got to buzz me a little sooner. And, Mickey, don't overplay it. Yeah, you don't have to give me that... Oh, what do you mean? I was now, just trying please, to Now, please, like gentlemen, it. please. Let's run through it again. Now, everybody keep on your toes. Yes. Hurry it up, Mulligan. Remember, wait 20 seconds before you come in. 20 seconds, yes, sir. 20, 19, 18, 17... <laughs> Say you're a lovely young lady, etc. I move over here. <laughs> see the lint? Well, Mr. Patterson. Well, Mr. Brown, good to see you on your toes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Patterson. I like an alert organization, Brown. All right, that'll be However, this young man has a little lint on his shoulder. Mulligan, that will do. Sorry. Oh, Mr. Patterson should be here any time now. <laughs> He's a sly old fox. He likes to catch people off guard. <laughs> He's going to have to get up awfully early in the morning to trip me up. The boys back east are afraid of him, but he doesn't scare me. When he comes in, I'll say, I have a few bones to pick with you, Mr. Patterson. Yes, Brown. I'd like to challenge your decision on... Patterson? Yes, Brown. I don't know what your game is, but I'm a busy man. Shall we go into your office and discuss our business? Certainly, sir. Lint. <laughs> I'm not at all satisfied with your choice of new shows to put on the air this season. All we can do is follow our own judgment, J.L. That's right, sir. No one knows in advance what the public is going to decide. That's where you're wrong. It's your job to know what the public wants. Now, of all the new shows we put on the network this season, which, in your opinion, is going over best with the public? Well, sir, I don't think there can be any question as to which new show is the most popular. You know it as well as I do. And I respect your opinion, sir. What do you say, Brown? Sir, no one can influence my opinion. I make up my own mind. Which is the most popular new show, Brown? In this case, I go along with you, sir. I think it's the same show you think it is. <laughs> been there for over an hour. What could they be doing? Maybe they're playing chess. The last time I was in there, they were still trying to decide which was the most popular new show on the network. The most popular new show on the network? Mm -hmm. Well, that shouldn't be too hard to figure out. Of course out. not. Everybody knows it's the Saturday Night Super Duper Spectacular. Oh, of course. Wait, that's my opinion, too. I beg to differ with you both. You know what I think is the top show? Huh? What? No, what do you think? I'll write it down right here. Here it is. Now, guess what it is. 
Oh, what is it? Know. Super duper spectacular? What else could it be? No, there it is, right there. True, true to life, life Tim. Tim. True to life. Oh, oh. come on, not true. You sure. can't be serious. Well, look, I like true to life, Tim. That's my opinion. Look, don't admit this to anybody else. They're liable to take you away in a butterfly net. <laughs> Let's stop beating around the bush, gentlemen. You're going to have to commit yourselves and in writing. Yes, sir. Miss, would you send in a couple of pads and pencils? Right away, sir. Oh, I'll take them in for you, Pat. Oh, you're bucking for a raise, huh? Mickey, no ad living. <laughs> yes, sir? Oh, yes, Paige, will you hand the pads to Mr. Edwards and Mr. Brown? Yes, of course, sir. Just write down the most popular new show in your opinion. Yes, uh, Paige, uh, open a window here, which is very stuffy in here. Yes, sir. I want to warn you, gentlemen, this is a test. Your future as program directors for this network may depend on it. <laughs> Uh, you see, I already know the most popular new show. I've just spent a million dollars on a special public opinion poll to find out. Penny, can you pick up the pads, please? Yes, sir. There. Uh, Gentlemen, pads. Thank you. Yes, uh, sir. Thank you. Uh, Edwards, Saturday Night Super Duper Spectacular. Brown, Saturday Night Super Duper Spectacular. You're both in accord on this, are you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, just a moment. Did you vote twice, Brown? Oh, no, sir. Just once. Then who wrote this? A ghost? I believe it was me, sir. Uh, come here a minute. Uh... Mulligan, sir. M-U-L-L-I-G-A-N. Gentlemen, do you know what Mulligan picked as the most popular new show? True to life, Tim. Mulligan, didn't I give you the day off? Well, excuse me, sir. I didn't mean to interfere, but you... Allow me to read the results of the public opinion poll I spent a million dollars on. According to the television viewers of America, the most popular program on this network is True to Life, Tim. True to Life, Tim? I can't believe it. Tell me, uh... uh Mulligan, sir. M-U-L-L-I-G-A-N. Tell me, Mulligan, what were your reasons for selecting True to Life, Tim? Well, sir, the reason that I selected True to Life, Tim, is because it's the only comedy show on the air that makes you cry. It's so true to life that it's sad. Ah, oh, very interesting. Go on. Well, most of the comedies on the air nowadays, they tend to make the people laugh. I believe that the people actually are looking for a comedy show that makes them cry. And the poll agrees with that? Absolutely. Tell me, Tim, uh, uh, Mulligan, yes, is there anything you don't like about the show? Well, yes, sir, there is one thing I, I don't like about the show. It's such a good show, I believe they're hurting it by using canned crying. I didn't know they used canned crying. Oh, yes, it's easy to detect. You see, they, they laugh in the sad spots. Mm. Tell me, Mulligan, what's your second choice for the most popular show? Well, my second choice would be Breakout. That's the documentary series that's being filmed at Alcatraz, I believe. Breakout? Breakout. Just like it says here. What's your third choice? Well, sir, for my third choice, I believe I'd choose Macaroni and his Enchanted Piano. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Mulligan, how much do you make a week? Uh, $47.62. Take home pay, sir. Gentlemen, do you realize what this means? I have just spent $1 million to get information I could have obtained for $47.62. Uh, take home pay. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> Mulligan of all people. This page here has the same likes and dislikes as the average television viewer. This is the average man. He's the average man? <laughs> what a blood-curdling thought. Mulligan, I'm assigning you to a new position. From now on, I want you to look at every new show before we put it on the air and give me your average man's opinion about it. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, I'll do my best. But at all costs, you must remain the average man. Yeah. Don't change anything in your way of life. Eat the same food, drive the same car, go out with the same girl to the same places, and above all, don't let anyone influence your average man's opinion. Oh, thank you, Mr. Patterson. I'll do my level best. Glad to have you aboard, Mulligan. Thank you, sir. It's nice to be aboard. <laughs> oh, oh, Mr. Patterson, pardon me, sir, but uh, haven't you forgotten one slight thing? No, no, what's that, Mulligan? Uh, with this new job, shouldn't I get a raise? Certainly not. If you got a raise, you would no longer be the average man. Oh, of course. This is delicious now. Michael, your dinner's getting cold. Be there in a minute, Mom. Why is he always so late for dinner? Oh, I don't know, just a bad habit. Michael! In a minute, Mom. Come on, Michael. Have you started eating yet? 
Sure, we started eating. All right, I'm coming. Mmm, Mom, that food smells good. What are you doing? Just waiting for you to get started. Well, why didn't you come in and eat? Because I'm always late for dinner, and I don't want to jeopardize my position as the average man. Oh, Michael, don't sit there tonight. Oh, sit over there. <laughs> why, Mom? I always sit here. I, I've got to sit here. An average man never changes his mind, remember. <laughs> was broken? That's what happens when the average man sits on a below-average chair. <laughs> Looks like this job has its pitfalls. <laughs> but why don't you go to bed? Oh, average time for going to bed is about 10 minutes after 11. I've got about an hour and a half yet. Haven't we had enough of this average man stuff? Oh, Pop, it's my job. Job? I think this fellow Patterson is I wonder who that could be. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, Pop. I'll get it. Remember, I answer the door at night. <laughs> Guess who? Pat. What are you doing here? You never call on me. I usually call on you. Well, I was out shopping. I thought I'd stop by on my way home. Oh. Well, aren't you going to ask me in? Well, I never usually see you on Tuesdays. It's just Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Uh, that's the average. Michael, what on earth? Come on in, Pat. What's wrong with him? Just the average man at work. Well, Mom doesn't realize the responsibility that Mr. Patterson has placed upon my shoulders. That makes two of us. You know, Mickey, I always thought of you as above average. If being the average man makes you act like this, then speaking as an average girl, I'd like to say good night. But, Pat, wait a minute. You don't have... Well, does this fit in with what usually happens on your average Tuesday? Another pitfall I hadn't counted on. Well, Mr. Average Man, what did you think of that show? I like the chimpanzee. I thought the lead was a little weak, though. Lead weak. Why don't we let the chimp play the lead? Please, Patrick, it's, it's serious to make decisions like this. Just a thought. Are you mad at me? Let's keep us out of this report. Any more comments on the show? I thought the love scenes were a bit unbelievable. What do you know about a believable love scene? Well, for instance, uh, when that fellow put his arm around the girl like that and he looked into her eyes and she looked into his, and then he read the commercial. What should he have done? What any average man would have done. Sorry, sir, I was just trying to keep up my average. <laughs> They've all run off and left me. And they know how I hate to be alone in this great big house. <laughs> Nobody wants me anymore. <laughs> Nobody wants Auntie Julia. I'm just in the way. <laughs> what was that? I heard something. <gasps> Could it be the escaped killer? <laughs> He's coming for me. I must be very still so he doesn't find me. I didn't like it. You didn't like it? Didn't move me. What do you mean it didn't move you? You nearly jumped out of your seat. Well, well, it could have been a good show, but that uh, Bessie Frost, her acting went out with button shoes. Well, I have to agree with you there. I'll just put it in the report that the show could be successful if they'd get somebody else to replace Miss Bessie Frost. I'm sorry to have to do it to Miss Frost. 
<laughs> oh, wait a minute. You better hold up that report. Let me think it over tonight. Maybe there's a way we can word it so it won't be a black mark against her. <laughs> that proves it. Proves what? You're not so average after all. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. I keep saying replace her. Average man got a problem? I sure have, Pop. A king size one. What is it, son? It's confidential. I understand. How could I get myself in this kind of a spot? Who am I to pass judgment on anybody? Like I was a Supreme Court or something. Now, look, Michael, I've been worried about this setup from the beginning. Average man. When you get where you can tell people what they like and what you don't like, you're not average anymore. Well, Pop, I only took this job because I thought I was going to help Mr. Patterson and the, the network. I didn't mean to hurt anybody. Well, maybe Mr. Patterson was mistaken in your ability to judge shows. Well, uh, that couldn't be right. After all, I picked the top three shows just like the public opinion poll picked. Coincidence. Now, look, son. The average man even disagrees with the average man. Like when we go to the movies, we all go for a different reason. Your mother goes to see the feature. I go to see the newsreel. You go for the popcorn. I never thought of it that way before, Pop. Oh, I'm home. Oh, hello, Michael. Hello. Joe, look who I bumped into downtown. Oh, Bessie Frost. Oh, well, I'll be. <laughs> Joe Mulligan, you're as handsome as ever. Just love the great hair. Well, you haven't changed much in 20 years. You know, we saw one of your old movies on TV the other night. Oh, you mean Child of the City, where I played a little girl? Yeah, that was... Uh, oh, and Bessie, this is Michael. Oh, Michael. What do you do, Miss Frost? Well, I must admit, you have changed a little. The last time I saw you, your head was stuck between the bars of a playpen. <laughs> Come on, Bessie, sit down over here. I want you to tell Joe all about your big break. <sighs> well, I can hardly believe it myself. It seems almost like a miracle. Bessie has a starring role in a new television show. And it's at your network, Michael IBC. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, congratulations, <laughs> Bessie. And if the network likes the first show, they're going to do a whole series. It's called The Trials and Tribulations of Auntie Julia. Uh -huh. You hear that, Michael? Yes. Oh, this could be the start of a whole new career for me. It was so long since I had a job, I thought I was all washed up. Oh, you washed up. Never. Well, I began to believe I couldn't act anymore. <laughs> and you'll never know what that feeling did to me. If I don't make good this time, I just don't know what I'll do. I don't see how you can miss. When does your show go on? At the end of the week. First, they want to show it to somebody who has to okay all their shows. Oh, I just hope he likes it. Oh, I'm sure he will. Won't you, Michael? Boy. Say, Mickey, Boy. wouldn't it be funny if we were both working for the same network? Then when I get to be a big television star, I could put in a good word for you. My conclusion is that Trials and Tribulations of Auntie Julia will be a successful show due to the wonderful acting of Bessie Frost. Signed, Michael Mulligan, A.M. A.M.? Average man. The wonderful acting of Bessie Frost. I thought she was horrible. So did I, but what's our opinion against 50 million people? Mulligan, are you sure? Really sure? I'm afraid I'm going to have to stand by my opinion, Mr. Brown. Well, that's that. We'll make arrangements to put the Andy Julia show on the air tomorrow night. You've done it again, Mulligan. <laughs> I'm afraid so. Nobody wants Auntie Julia. I'm just in the way. <laughs> Go on, finish it, Mulligan. It's a review of a show you recommended. The title should be changed to The Trials and Tribulations of the Television Viewer. <laughs> oh, keep reading. Everyone knows that Frost ruins a lot of good things. Bessie Frost is no exception. That was a compliment compared to what the reporter said. We've gotten over 100 telegrams saying that the show was awful. A woman in Pennsylvania is suing the station. And the man 
sent us back his television set. <laughs> he said he was going back to jigsaw puzzles. Well, hasn't anyone liked the show? Uh, have you heard from the sponsors yet? No, and I hope to be in South America before I do. Mulligan, you stay here till we get back. Let's go, Brown. Say, if you've got a minute, I've got something for the average man to consider. Hi there. I'm Mickey Rooney. All right, Mulligan, come along. We're ready for you. Accusing me of telling an untruth, Mr. Patterson? What makes you think that, Mulligan? Well, this is a lie detector, isn't it, sir? It's called a polygraph. Then you're accusing me of polygraphing. <laughs> Nobody, nobody's accusing you of anything. We just can't believe it was your honest opinion that Bessie Frost is a great actress. We want to find out if something didn't influence your judgment. I'm ready when you are, gentlemen. Go ahead, Mr. Starkey. Now, Mr. Mulligan, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Yes, sir. As long as your answers are true, the needles on a machine will keep on an even course. I see. But should you tell an untruth, the needles will go wild. All right. I think I understand. I, I think I saw this once in Dragnet. Here we go. <laughs> what is your name? Who? No, no, no. Oh. I'm sorry, gentlemen. We'll have to start all Excuse over again. Me, Just answer the questions directly. Excuse me, sir. What is your name? Michael Mulligan. Do you own a cat? No, sir. What did you have for breakfast this morning? Um, cantaloupe, bacon and eggs, some hot cakes, a waffle, and some stewed uh, prunes. You had all that for breakfast? You should hear what he eats for dinner. Well, I had some chocolate milk, and that's all. Oh, oh I, I forgot. I had some... Uh, some apple pie, too. Yeah, then that does it for sure. Do you own a cat? Well, uh, you asked me that question before, sir. Answer the question. Do you own a cat? No, sir. What is your name? Michael Mulligan. Do you honestly think that Bessie Frost is a good actress? Answer the question, please. Do you honestly think Bessie Frost is a good actress? Yes, sir. Uh, well, that is about Miss Frost. I'd, I, I'd like to explain, if I may. Do you own a cat? Uh, Michael Mulligan. Uh, I mean... Do you honestly think that Bessie Frost is a good actress? No. Uh, I mean, yes. Yes, well, that is... Well, she's worked hard enough at it. She should be. I... I, I didn't want to hurt her. After all, who am I to say if she's a good actress or she isn't? Well, gentlemen, you can you can shut off the machine now. It's all right, Mulligan. You got nothing to be ashamed of. I should have known that the average man would let his feelings interfere with his judgment. Well, I guess we'd better cancel the Auntie Julie show. Mr. Brown, this teletype just came in from Chicago. The sponsor wants to renew the Aunt Julia show for a full season. Think show could stand improvement, but crazy about the way Bessie Frost gave commercial message. Sign her to do commercials on our five other shows. Well, Bessie made it. Come on, Brown, let's sign Bessie before somebody else grabs her. How about who goes this afternoon, J.L.? Good idea. Oh, gentlemen, you better not play this afternoon because it's going to rain. Nonsense. The weatherman predicts clear weather for a week. Well, I, I predict rain. Of course, that's only my personal opinion. <laughs> <laughs> And now, a word from next week's sponsor. Well, friends, I can't see anything wrong with that. That was the good word from the folks who bring you our next show. Be with us then, won't you? Oh, and by the way, I've resigned as the average man since I predicted rain for Mr. Brown's golf game. He doesn't want me to make any more predictions. And after all, friends, I can't really predict anything anyway, even though I feel as though there's going to be an earthquake any second now. <laughs>